There's one very, very big problem with lithium batteries. And that is, they don't really work in extreme cold. However, there just might be a solution to this very big problem. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Viking, great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. So what happens when you try to use a lithium battery in say minus 50 degrees Celsius? I was on a flight back from Indonesia recently and on the little screen in front of me, it said the temperature outside was minus 58 degrees Celsius. Would it be a problem if that airliner was powered by batteries and flying in the air in minus 56 degrees Celsius? Yes, it potentially could be a problem. Battery energy densities are now improving to the point where it won't be long until we can theoretically use lithium batteries to power enormous 747 jets, right? Enormous airliners. But extreme cold temperatures could still be a problem. When temperatures fall below freezing, cell phones need to be recharged more often and electric cars have shorter driving ranges. This is because their lithium ion batteries as anodes get, well, for lack of a better term, sluggish. They hold less charge and they drain energy much more quickly. And this is a problem. But to improve electrical performance in extremely cold temperatures, researchers reporting in ACS Central Science have replaced the traditional graphite anode in a lithium ion battery with a bumpy carbon-based material which maintains its rechargeable storage capacity down to minus 31 Fahrenheit. Lithium-ion batteries are great for powering rechargeable electronics because they can store a lot of energy and they have long lifespans. But when temperatures fall below freezing, these energy sources, electrical performances, declines. And when conditions are just cold enough, they fail to transfer any charge at all. So you can imagine, right? That big 747 going along and all of a sudden it gets just that bit too cold and down goes the airplane. Well, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic there, but the point is, this is definitely something we need to overcome in order for all transportation to be fully electric. And it's why some people living in the US Midwest in really cold parts of North America can have trouble with their electric cars in the middle of winter. It's also why it's risky to use lithium ion batteries in space exploration. Recently though, scientists determined that the flat orientation of graphite in the anode of the battery is what's responsible for the drop in a lithium ion battery's energy storage capacity in the cold. So, Yi Wang and Yan and Yao and colleagues wanted to modify the surface structure of a carbon-based material to improve the anode's charge transfer process in freezing temperatures. To create this new material, researchers heated a cobalt containing zeolite emetazolate framework known as ZIF67 at high temperatures. The resulting 12-sided carbon nanospheres had bumpy surfaces that demonstrated excellent electrical charge transfer capabilities in cold temperatures. Then the team tested the material's electrical performance at the anode with lithium metal as the cathode inside a coin-shaped battery. The anode demonstrated stable charging and discharging at temperatures from 77 degrees Fahrenheit down to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and maintained 86% of the room temperature energy storage capacity just below freezing. In comparison, lithium ion batteries made with other carbon-based anodes, including graphite and carbon nanotubes, held almost no charge at freezing temperatures. When the researchers dropped the air temperature to minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit, the anode made with bumpy nanospheres was still rechargeable, and during discharge, it released nearly 100% of the charge put into the battery. It seems as though this could be the solution. Incorporating the bumpy nanosphere material into lithium-ion batteries could open up the possibility for using these types of chemistries and battery materials in extremely low temperatures, say the researchers. Now, while this might not be relevant for most people around the world, I mean, 
99% of people live in temperatures where it's not really ever going to be cold enough that you're going to truly run out of battery charge and simply not be able to operate your electric car. There are things like preheating that can prevent these things from happening. The reality is there are places where we do need batteries where it's always going to be extremely, extremely cold. Now, currently, if a lithium battery is charged fully at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and the temperature drops to zero degrees Fahrenheit, then what will happen to the battery? Well, the charge is technically still there, but just inaccessible. The battery will discharge less of its nominal capacity in colder conditions. If the battery had, say, 100 kilowatt hours at room temp and the temperature was lowered drastically below zero, it might only now have 50 kilowatt hours of dischargeable energy that it's able to actually use. If the battery warmed back up, though, the full energy would then be available, sort of like magic. So for those of you who are living in extreme cold temperatures, maybe you're on the North Pole, maybe you're uh, living in Alaska or something like that, or Northern Russia, Siberia. Yes, electric cars definitely will work in your areas, but you may have some problems in extremely cold temperatures. However, as you can see, people will always be able to find solutions to the biggest challenges in the world. And that's exciting. It's exciting to be alive. It's an amazing time right now for battery technology. More and more companies, more and more scientists, more and more researchers are spending hours and hours and many, many millions of dollars on investing into the perfect battery chemistry for all temperatures. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Have you ever had a problem with cold batteries, lithium batteries? I have personally, when I've been hiking in the mountains, I've found my battery, my phone in my battery can sometimes just shut down altogether, even when my phone should have 50% of charge. Let me know if you've had that experience as well. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.